April has now come to an end, so it's time to rank all 10 movies I watched this month. So let's get right to the tier list. All right, first up on the tier list is Musica. This is directed by Rudy Mancuso, who I'm not really familiar with, but I went to this one blind. It's on Amazon Prime right now. And I was actually kind of, you know, thrown aback by how cool this movie was, how innovative this movie was. It's it's not really a musical, I would say, because there's not really any singing in it. It's a lot of just instruments because what Rudy Mancuso's character and kind of this is like, kind of like what he experiences in life is just hearing sounds and connecting the sound in real life so it's really cool to see that like develop in a filmmaking perspective so i really did enjoy all the technical parts of this film the costume design the sets in here there's one there's one really cool scene where the sets just keep changing and changing and there's no cuts on the camera it kind of feels like a play in some sense and camila mendes is in this i thought she gave a really good performance because she's finally done with riverdale so she can do like kind of real projects now and i really did like this one a lot i feel like this one works a lot it's a you know it's kind of a rom-com in a way but you know it's not like those other rom-coms where it's the same thing over and over again i really did find this one to be really original i really did like Rudo, rudy mancuso's direction so i'm gonna put this one in the good tier next up we got wicked little letters this is the one with jesse buckley and olivia coleman this one didn't really have a wide release but i was really lucky i got to see this in theaters because it's actually really freaking funny like it's one of the funniest films of the year and let me just tell you there's a lot of cursing in this movie jesse buckley gets to have the time of her life just cursing up a storm in every single sentence i don't even know how many f-bombs there were in this movie in english because this is an english movie so there's a lot of english slang english cursing here so i just thought that was really funny i really do think that jesse buckley is a really underrated actress I, I didn't really like Men that much, her movie with Alex Garland, but I really do like her performances in every single movie that she gives. Olivia Coleman gives a really you know, kind of villainous performance in here, but a really like kind of, you know, not performance that you really see from her a lot. So I really like that a lot. As I said, it's really funny, but it is a little too long, I would say. That's what's keeping it from being a great movie. So Wicked Little Letters, you know, I feel like if you have a chance to go see this on digital, it's a really good. So I'm going to put it in the good tier. Next up, we got Monkey Man. This is, of course, Deb Patel's directorial debut. He, of course, stars in this as the lead. This is, the, of course, the newest action movie of the year. I think it, this is the best action movie of the year. Even though we haven't had too many action movies this year, if you're going to talk about pure action movies, it's really only this and The Beekeeper. And I will say that this one's easily better than The Beekeeper. And I will say, you know, I was really high on this movie when it first came out, but ever since I've started thinking about it a little bit more, I've gone, I've gone down a little bit on my score, but I still really do like it. It shows that the pacing and the 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 camera movements and the camera work in the fights really did bother me because I feel like it really slowed down that second act. And it just makes me think that it's a little too long. And there's too much shaky cam in the action. Even though the action with Deb Patel is really cool, I feel like the camera movement just suffered there. And the story, I really like the cultural story of the movie. But as I said, if you have to slow it down so far in the second act, I don't think it works too well in that moment. But I thought Deb Patel was really great. I thought the first act and the third act were easily the strongest parts of the movie. Even though it did slow down, I really did have a great time with this one. It's not as amazing as I thought it was on first watch, but I still really did enjoy it. So I'm going to put Deb Patel's Monkey Man in the great tier. Next up, we got The Greatest Hits. This is on Hulu, another pretty original movie, I would say. This one has David Corn sweat in here, and you can tell how you know how I, this film this movie was filmed a long time ago because david corn sweat in this is not even that jacked i mean he's pretty jacked but if you see him now getting ready for superman and filming superman he's so jacked like it's so different to see david corn sweat in this movie and then like see him filming superman right now it's absolutely insane this movie is kind of about a story about girl and, you know her boyfriend died in a car crash when they're listening to music now she hears, imagine when she listens to the music that they used to listen to, she goes back in time to that specific moment where he's still alive. So it's kind of like a time travel movie with music and she has to find ways to stop it. She's trying to find ways to keep him alive, to keep him from dying in that moment. She meets a new guy at, you know, her therapy class. And so I really didn't enjoy this one. I know a lot of people think it's not really that original, kind of like every other uh, romance kind of movie, but I really did enjoy the music factor. I love the soundtrack in here. I loved how thoughtful it was to its characters and kind of like the romance factor worked a lot for me. Sometimes the romance doesn't feel authentic, but right here, I do think it feel, felt authentic. I really did like the ending because sometimes it's just going to go, uh, it's just going to go for that non, you know, original ending, just going to go for the same ending as every romance movie goes for. But I feel like this one went for a pretty original ending. So I liked what it did here. So I'm going to put, I, 
I'm going to put the greatest hits in the good tier. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is one that I went to at the early screening for the mystery mystery movie. And this one I had a lot of fun with, but it still has a lot of problems with it. This one's kind of like Monkey Man. I'm not as high on it as I was when I first watched it because I saw it a second time. And it kind of, the pacing kind of just ran too long for me. Like, it was a really sluggish time throughout the moments when you don't have Henry Cavill and Alan Bridgeton together. We're not dealing with, you know, killing Nazis in here. Then you're really having a slow time. Like, you're having, you're having to really kind of push through these moments. Because sometimes you're just with the logistics of the movie and you're just talking about the planning and stuff. And I'm like, I just want to get back to killing Nazis. Because when Henry Cavill and Alan Bridgeton are just killing Nazis, I'm like, I'm having the time of my life. This is easily... One of the best movies of the year, but then then you had the other stuff, and it's easily not one of the best movies of the year. But I loved Alan Richson just using a bow and arrow just to shoot Nazis was so cool. I think Isa Gonzalez to have a great performance too. She was usually one of the standouts of the movie. Has a lot of screen presence that I like. I love the ending. It's just a full on massacre of like thousands of Nazis. I don't know if it's thousands, but it's hundreds and hundreds. And I was like, I'm really enjoying this a lot. Even though the story isn't that strong. I mean, it is a true story, which is kind of surprising. Story is not that strong because it's a really slow movie at times. It's two hours and it should have been like an hour 30, an hour and 40. I feel like Guy Ritchie makes his movies a little too long, but I feel like he nails the action and nails the humor like the first scene when they're on the boat i thought that humor was hilarious and i loved henry cavill and alan richardson's chemistry in here when they're all together it's cool and then there's a terrible name drop at the end that i didn't care for but it's still had a fun time with it even though i'm not as high on it still gonna put it in the okay tier abigail is the newest horror movie of the year and it's not the best horror movie of the year but it still is very good i was kind of like very surprised it was as good as it was but i shouldn't have been because it's from radio silence and they've delivered as great films such as scream 5 scream 6 uh ready or not and there's another one that i'm forgetting but they really do deliver us some really fun and really entertaining horror movies and they all uh, they also deliver the blood and this one is bloody glorious like there's so much blood in this movie there's like some serious seriously messed up scenes where someone's just exploding and blood is hitting everywhere hitting the characters everywhere and i'm like I'm glad I didn't film this movie because I'd blab blood everywhere on my face and that stuff, that fake blood is probably really sticky. And of course, this one's about the ballerina vampire and I really enjoyed that aspect. I love how a ballerina was a vampire. So she's just, you know, she's just dancing around with everyone and it's so cool how she just dances around and kind of kills everyone in those kind of ballerina way tactics. And I thought the ensemble here was great. You know, you have Angus, Angus Cloud in here, rest in peace to him. So sad that he died so early in his life. But I thought everyone in here did a great job. And then you had Melissa Bar Barrera in here. I thought she did great. You know, she got fired from Scream. So you're having a whole boycott with Scream, Scream franchise now with Scream fans. I want to support her in the Scream franchise, but I really did like her performance in here. Catherine Newton is continuing as the horror icon that she is. And Dan Stevens, you know, we saw him in Godzilla X Kong as a funny character. Here he is a very funny character, but he's also a very different character than he was in Godzilla X Kong. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one a lot. It's a very fun movie. Not that scary, but there's a lot of gore, a lot of blood, and just a lot of fun moments with the ballerina vampires. So it's going to go in the good tier. Next up is Rebel Moon Part 2. If you're a Zack Snyder fan, you're going to hate me after this opinion but I think this one is easily another bad Zack Snyder movie and easily worse than Rebel Moon Part 1 because once you go into a Part 2 and you didn't care about Part 1 you're going to go into Part 2 and not care as much when you go into it because there's so many characters that they've already built up in here and you don't really care about their motivations you don't really care about the villain's motivations so why would I care about the movie? I, I, I don't know. I thought it was going to be a little bit better than the first one but it sucks as it what that it wasn't. And I don't feel like, feel like this is the cast's fault. I think it's the writing and just the story's fault. I feel like you're just trying to, you know, copy some Star Wars type movie and just make a silly little sci-fi movie with a great story, but it doesn't have a great story. Because the t some of the technical aspects are pretty cool. Like the cinematography actually looks pretty nice. And, you know, I, I do this to like some of the costumes, but I feel like just the what tears this movie down is just the slow-mo. I don't know what Zack Snyder uses so much slow-mo. I don't remember you, him using this much slow-mo in his beginning, you know, his first film. So I swear he uses just way too much. And just the first half of this movie is straight up these characters just farming. I know you're on like a farming planet, but we don't need to be farming for half the movie. It's just, it, we're, we're like in the middle of a war after that first movie and you're just farming. It, it doesn't make any sense. Why are we farming? And why are we farming in slow motion? 
No one wants to watch someone farm in slow motion. This isn't farming simulator. If I wanted to farm, I would do some farming simulator. That's a fun game. And this isn't fun to watch people farm in slow motion. The second half tries to redeem it with action, but still, the action isn't that impressive. I don't really like the choreography that they're going for here. The slow-mo on the action scenes isn't as cool as Dex Center thinks it is. So Rebel Moon Part 2... I'm going to put it in the bad tier. It's it's almost in that terrible tier, but it's not there yet. Then we have the first Omen, which you've seen my review. I think this is easily the best horror movie of the year. And one of the best movies of the year. I was kind of blown away by this movie because it had no right to be as good as it did. And it's kind of like almost the same story as Immaculate. And it came out two weeks after Immaculate. But it's so much better than Immaculate. If you have to choose one, I would choose this one. This is easily better than Immaculate. You know, it's about the Antichrist and all that. And some of these scenes really mess me up. Like, I'm kind of a horror, you know, I don't I don't really like horror, like, some of those scenes, like, the imagery in some of those scenes, but I'm a big, really big horror fan because I feel like if you can elevate the genre in here, then it gets to an even better level because I think ele elevating the horror genre is really hard, but I feel like the director here, I, I think her name was Akasha Stevenson. She did a great job elevating this movie. I really did enjoy it a lot. Performances were all great. Some of the scenes really did mess me up. They're like, some of the birthing scenes in here, like, I don't know how they got away with what they did, because it was almost NC-17, and they got down to rated R, but man, some of those scenes were wicked, the devil transformation scenes, I was like, I was like, ah, I gotta close my eyes, I can't watch this, but yeah, I really did enjoy this one, and the technical aspects of it were also really good, it was two hours, but it didn't feel two hours, I thought it was paced very well, some horror movies feel way too long, like a lot of movies this month felt a way too long, but I felt like this one had perfect pace, really scary and i really can't wait to own this one i hope it comes out in physical but it is from 20th century so who knows sometimes the non-physical releases but i'll still be watching this one in digital if it doesn't have physical release because i really i really want to rewatch this one a lot hopefully we get a sequel but it's not doing too well at the box office so go support this movie because it's great civil war is the newest film from alex garland and probably the last one for a while because he did say he's going to take a long break from directing films after this but he said he's still going to write some movies which is pretty good this is easily you know the most divisive movie of the year probably his most divisive movie because people say it's really bad some people say it's really amazing and me I think it is really amazing. I was kind of, I was kind of like, when in this movie, I was like, I was expecting, you know, some action here, but mostly dialogue, but there's tons of action. You know, if you're expecting a really dialogue heavy movie, some parts there is a lot of dialogue, but I think it's needed in this movie, but there's so much action. Like the last 25 minutes just filled with action when they're attacking the White House in here. And Kaylee Spaney and, and Kristen Dunst really did give some terrific performances. It's like Kaylee Spaney's year. Last 12 months, she's been in uh, Priscilla, this, and she's going to be an Alien, Rom Alien Romulus. It's absolutely insane. Then Wagner Moore, Moore gave a great performance. And, you know, some people are complaining about this movie. It's not, I mean, it's not political. It doesn't pick a side. And I'm like, is it supposed to pick a side? I don't really agree that it should have picked a side because then you would have known what political party, you know, uh, Alex Garland's in. So I don't really think I care about that too much. I just care about these journalists in here and why would journalists pick a side? Journalists are just there to document the battle and send the pictures back. They don't really care what's going on. They just care about getting these pictures, you know, sent out and just sharing these pictures. So that's all I really cared about and I got what I wanted because these pictures that they're taking are kind of horrific and kind of graphic at times. So it was really cool to see the imagery in here and how Alex Garden Alex Garden placed that. And some of the soundtrack was actually really well placed in here. I really liked that a lot. Some scenes in here are really tense, like Jesse Plemons, we've been talking about that scene, he has that one like five minute scene, one of the most tense moments I've been in a theater in a long time, like he's just, he has so much great screen presence, he's so scary, and he puts on those red glasses, and then you're like even more terrified, I'm like, no, no, don't shoot our characters, please, but it's a scene that I wasn't, I was like, I was getting ready for it, but I still wasn't prepared for it when it came, I was still clenching my, clenching my hands, I was like, I can't do this anymore, it's, it's actually getting really tense here. As I said, I love the character, you know, the characters in here. I loved how, you know, they were like placed in each moment and how you found them and how their motivations were and then how they changed throughout the movie. I really did like how Alex Garland wrote them. So yeah, I really, I really thought this was an amazing picture. It's easily in my top five of the year. Probably will stay there for a long time. So Civil War is going in the amazing tier. And the last movie we're going to talk about is Challengers. I thought this movie was a masterpiece, straight up perfection. I was not prepared for how great this movie was going to be, but Luca Guadagnino is already known for great movies like Call Me By Your Name, Bones and All, but this 
this is on another level for him it's his best movie yet second best movie of the year it's it's you know i I'm, it's a masterpiece I've seen 50 movies this year a lot of movies aren't only two movies are for me with this and dune part two zendaya she's on the top of the world two best movies of the year right now but the trio performances here by her uh josh o'connor and mike face are just something to all I, you know i wouldn't say i have a favorite performance but just by a little bit it's probably josh o'connor his performance is kind of crazy uh you know it's kind of like a kind of like a villain type of movie all the three characters three of these characters have some different motivations have some very villainous chances and they take those chances very sexual movie if you hated poor things because it had a lot of sex you're gonna hate this there's a lot of kissing a lot of making out in this one a lot of sexual tension true erotic thriller the cinematography was absolutely breathtaking you become the tennis ball pov you become the tennis player's pov you have shots under the tennis court it's insane trent reznor and atticus ross's score is some of the best i've heard in a long time it reminded me of something like tron legacy it's got that techno electric vibe every single conversation between characters feels like a tennis match the tennis matches feel like you know a fight at a creed it's so intense i didn't know what i was getting into but i just can't came out loving this movie it's two hours and ten minutes i was worried about that but i wanted it to be 30 minutes longer it's just it's a special type of movie. It's a character drama. It's a sports film. It's an erotic thriller all in, all in one. It's perfect in my opinion. So it's going in the amazing tier. Now, our favorite part is the final ranking. The be no, Nothing on a terrible tier. Almost Rebel Moon though, but Rebel Moon ends up on the bad tier. The okay tier is the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The good tier, we got some pretty interesting movies here. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, Abigail at the first spot Musica. Uh, and then Wicked Little... Well, yeah, Wicked Little Letters. Then The Greatest Hits. Uh, great tier. We're going to go first Omen uh, over Monkey Man because I thought it was, you know, I thought it had a lot more going for it. I think its rewatchability is a lot higher and it elevated horror onto something I haven't seen before in some aspects and actually scared me a lot. Amazing tier. Two amazing movies this month. Really good. You know, March had some very great movies this one. This month had some very great movies also. Hopefully make and can do the rest with, you know, Fall Guys, uh, Furiosa, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. But amazing tier. Challengers going in the first position. I think it's a masterpiece. I hope everyone goes and see it. You know, see it. You know, it's not going to make a lot, but I think everyone should go see this. It's rated R, though. Make sure you're an adult. But Challengers, the best movie of April. So that's all 10 movies I saw in April ranked. Leave your ranking down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. Helps it a lot. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.